Welcome to Team G503. I'm Scott Schiller, your host, and in this video, we'll be removing the gas tank and the axe and shovel brackets and bolt-ons on the driver's side of the 1943 Willis MB. I'm gonna be removing the gas tank from the tub, and you've got your filler cap here. And it's, it's, it's about half full of gas, so I'm gonna have to siphon that out. I don't wanna do it from the bottom side. We've got our sending unit here and our wire that goes to the fuel gauge. So let's start by taking the, the fuel or gas out of the tank. Got this handy dandy little siphon pump that I picked up for really cheap, I think it was four bucks. It's got an arrow on it for the direction. I guess the premise is you put that in the gas tank and I've got a container on the ground to hold the fuel and then we just pump that up and see if it works. Like a champ. A couple of things we notice here. This safety chain or retaining chain is supposed to be spotted on to this inside of this tube here, so that's broke. We'll have to fix that. And then if you've had one of these old Jeeps, it looks like they took some foam or cushion foam of some kind. I'm going to close this back up because I don't want it to fall in there. They've got these cushions here. That they stuck down the sides probably because stuff drops down in here. Uh, even your keys, believe me. Carry a little piece of wire with you around because you will drop your keys down there, I promise you. I'll take this out of here, put this in the trash can. To remove the sending wire to the fuel gauge, this is the sending unit. Just unscrew this. Off it comes. Save your lock washer and your screw, put it right back on that sending unit. get him out of the way. Then we've got these two straps that are held on with a nut and a bolt. It just compresses them, makes them tight. We'll go ahead and remove those. Let's undo the bolt. You see that strap already has come loose. And these have a little hook on them. And when I remove this gas tank, I'll show you exactly how those hook in there. But as you can see, that hook there, and we've got this welting on the back to protect that metal from rubbing up against the toolbox. Now comes the fun part, get underneath and we're going to have to undo the fuel line to get little remnants of fuel left in that tank. So we're underneath the Jeep now, and if you look right there, that's where the actual fuel line comes through the tub floor. Someone has put an inline filter in here, which is, that's a good idea. You can see the pieces of the old one that they just cut off and left there. So what I'm going to try to do now is I've got a little fuel left in the tank. It's not much, but I don't want to spill it all over the place and cause a fire. I'm going to see if I can't just remove this and drain that into my gas can. So now that I've got the majority of the gas drained out of this, there's still a little bit left in there. I'm simply going to lift up on it. So I've removed the gas tank and took it outside, and uh, we'll get back to that in a minute, and I'll show you some things on that tank now that I've got out. I'm looking down here into the sump, and somebody used some old gasket material to space the gas tank from rubbing on the floor, and unfortunately there's some holes here, and it looks like some Bondo where somebody has done a repair. Not a big deal. You've got these hooks on the side here where your axe and shovel mounts and dents are, and all that piece does is hook onto that bracket like so, and then we've, where we took the bolt off. And I'm gonna pair these back up with the same straps just because I like to do that. We've got the other one. 
Now if you look down here on the floor, you'll see another bracket where your strap hooks to, and then you've got this bolt-on one up here on the hump where the second strap connects to. And that's how the gas tank is fastened into your tub. Outside with the gas tank, out here on the apron, and unfortunately, this one has some issues. This one has been leaking. You can see this, it's been leaking right here. And someone's repaired it with something at some point. So we're gonna have to, it's the seam split right there. I guess nobody did repair it. We'll have to get to that because I don't want gas leaking into the tub of the MB. Come up here, you've got this little drain plug right there and there's still a little gas in there it's down here in the sump I just turned it sideways and I've got the lid on so that's safe and what I'll do is I'll take that off and we'll drain that into a container also I'll be using this because I'm gonna wind up flushing this tank out too that'll be now that I've got the gas tank removed from the inside of the tub I can access some of the fasteners from the back side of the tub for the axe and shovel straps you got your rear axe bracket you got your sheath that's welded to the tub and you've got these straps that are held on the side by footman loops you take those off start by taking the one on the top off first there's actual nuts on the back side of these screws shouldn't be too bad Remove that. I like to keep all the original hardware. But you can see that these footman loops, these straps just slip through there and then they're screwed onto the side of your tub. This one, this footman loop does not have nuts on the back. When I take this off, I'll take you inside the tub here and show you how this is fastened. interesting note of conversation if you've ever followed the G503 forum boards or Facebook about the old World War II Jeeps when it comes to this axe and shovel holder business there's been some controversy about two different areas for footman loops and I guess we can talk about that if you'd like to but on the 43 MB there definitely is two areas that look original to me from where footman loops would be attached to the body this rear strap indeed has nuts on the back side also but these are in the wheel well so we'll take these off that one's, that one's in there hmm. that one doesn't want to come out that can be fixed as you see there simply go inside and strap on this lower axe bracket has got four holes in it I don't believe that's right for the 43 MB I think you're supposed to have all four there but we're just gonna take that one off it's a little bit bent up but it's in pretty good shape we can probably fix that now this screw right here just goes through the back and again I'm going to take you inside the tub and show you these two little plates that have actual threads in them but somebody put a nut on the back of that one and we've got the rear axe bracket off on the inside of the tub you can see these plates are tacked to the actual tub and they are actually threaded and there's the ones where the top two come through and down here you can see that one of them threaded and one of them looks like it's been drilled out for that one bolt
On the front axe bracket, you've got these two half inch nuts that are on the outside. One is fastened from the underneath side of the tub here on this lip right below the step, and one on the inside of the tub right by where your feet would be. Let's go ahead and take those off. On this underneath side one here, I've got a little issue because here again, we've, we're in an area where I can't get a socket in there, so I'm just gonna use the box end open end wrench. It is difficult to get at. You couldn't get a socket in there. And that is right up against the floorboard. I've got the bottom one out. I'm just wiggle this out of here. And there is your front axe bracket. Move into the driver's side floorboard, and you can see that this has a fire extinguisher there. That's a really good idea. We've got our pedals, our inspection plate cover. But what I'm after is the nut that's behind this so I can get the front shovel bracket off. So I'm going to go ahead and take off the fire stick. Got our, we've got our high-low beam switch. And right there is the nut that I'm after for the outside shovel bracket that I'm going to be removing, which is there. I'm more or less holding that slotted screw bolt with the screwdriver as opposed to turning it. I don't want to twist that or scuff that. I'm just going to take the bolt, the nut off from the back side. This lower one is on the back side of the inside of the tub behind the fender. So we have to come at it from this side. Again, just holding that screw slot. This one's going to be nice. This one's going to come right off of here. Fantastic. And off comes your front shovel bracket. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you found it helpful. We are restoring a 1943 Willis MB and we're archiving it bolt by bolt, piece by piece on YouTube. Subscribe to Team G503. Special thank you to Ron Fitzpatrick and Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts. Until next time, keep it safe and happy jeeping.